Fractal noise and turbulent noise can both be found under the noise and grain category. And I'll start by just making a solid layer the size of my comp, and we'll start with fractal noise. This is going to generate a grayscale texture image based on a bunch of math, but it's really great for generating random textures used as displacement maps or clouds or smoke or even fire. There are a whole lot of settings and I'm gonna walk you through them really quickly. First of all, we have the ability to change the fractal type. It's defaulted to basic, but there are many different methods for generating the fractal noise, which you can click through and see they're all very different, which gives a whole lot of possibilities as to what you can create with it. On top of that, we have the ability to choose the noise type, which currently is set to soft linear, but if I change that to just linear, it's slightly different. If I change it to block, we get something that's a lot more blocky. Or finally, we have spline, which again is just another variation on the calculations for generating this texture. We can easily invert the texture with the invert checkbox. We can adjust the contrast and the brightness without any other outside effects. The overflow allows us to choose how we want to treat the pixels that are extremely bright or extremely black. Currently, it's defaulted to allow HDR results, meaning this will work in a 32 bits per channel workflow, but we could also change this to clip, where if the contrast is increased, then the darkest pixels are just pure black and the brightest pixels are just pure white. We could soft clamp it so it's a more gradual fall off, a much softer transition between those extremes, or we could wrap the black to make it cycle around and generate a very unique looking pattern. I'll reset that one more time and then we'll take a look at the transform controls. We have the ability to rotate the texture however we want, as well as adjust the scale or even unlink the uniform scaling so that we can scale the width and height independently from each other. That can be very useful for shaping your texture. We can also offset the turbulence however we want, either with this control right here or by grabbing the anchor point within the comp viewer. And we have the ability to adjust the perspective offset, which kind of simulates a parallax effect, giving this some more depth as I shift the texture around rather than just shifting the entire texture as a whole. Let me reset this back to defaults and we'll take a look at the next section, which is complexity. If I turn this down a lot, then you're gonna see our texture becomes much more simplified, a lot more artifacty. If I turn it up, then we're gonna get a lot more detail and it's gonna be a lot more grainy, basically, with finer detail in the texture. Underneath the sub settings, we have the ability to really dial in what some of these textures being blended together look like. And this sub influence percentage is basically how much it's blending these two textures together that are making up this particular fractal noise. But then we can also adjust the sub scaling. So how large or small that sub texture is as well as independently rotate that sub texture. So you can see there are multiple layers of fractal noise being generated there. We can even offset that sub texture. So these controls really allow you to make some very complex textures very easily. I'll reset that one more time, close up the sub settings, and we'll move on to evolution. This allows us to just cycle through this texture, flowing from one texture to another and giving us very unique random values. But we can also go into evolution options and cycle this evolution, meaning that every time that we have a revolution, a full revolution, the pattern will be repeated. So only the values between those revolutions will be different. Or if we come down to the cycle in revolutions value, I could change this to a different number like three, and then only every three cycles will be identical, and the values between those three revolutions will be unique. Then we have the random seed, which just gives us a completely unique starting point, randomly changing our texture on every single value. We also can control the opacity directly from this effect, as well as change the blending mode to almost all of the same blending modes that we have directly on the layer. So that's everything you can do with fractal noise, but I'm gonna turn that off, and we're going to apply the turbulent noise effect and take a look at it. If you notice, the controls are exactly the same. If I reset them back, we have fractal type, noise type, invert, contrast, brightness, overflow, they're all exactly the same. There are only two main differences between these two effects. The first is turbulent noise renders more quickly. It's just faster. The second difference is fractal noise has those evolution options that allow you to cycle the evolution while turbulent noise does not.
Otherwise, these two effects are identical. I don't even need to walk you through these settings because they're exactly the same. So use fractal noise if you need to animate and loop a fractal texture and use turbulent noise in all other cases. And that is fractal noise and turbulent noise in a nutshell. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.